Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part eight. We do this series on the first of every month where we look at the total market capitalization of not only Bitcoin, but the entire cryptocurrency asset class. We look at the fair value logarithmic regression trend line to try to identify where we are within the grand scheme of a market cycle. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Let's go for 104,000 subscribers. Give the video a thumbs up. Also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So. When we talk about cryptocurrency on this channel, we generally like to use some level of mathematics. And the, the level of mathematics that we use can vary wildly from one video to another. But in general, we like to you know try to understand, is there anything underlying going on behind the scenes that we might not otherwise be aware of? And I think the answer for Bitcoin and the rest of the cryptocurrency market capitalization is yes. And the reason we think about this in general is because we see math in nature all the time. We're part of nature and our reaction to markets can somewhat be boiled down to, or maybe it can be boiled down to some mathematical principle for all we know. For instance, we can see you know, Fibonacci spirals in, in, um, in shells. We can see tons of really interesting patterns in, in flowers and, and you know these hexagons in beehives or the the um the honey that they make all sorts of golden ratio stuff that also appear in in plants and whatnot and it just goes on and on and so the idea is well if if math exists in nature and we're part of nature then maybe there's something going on in cryptocurrency that we might not otherwise be aware of and this is the chart we like to show on the first of every month to keep ourselves updated on where we are within the grand scheme of market cycle. The red line that you see is this equation, y equals 10, and then it's all raised to the power a times the ln of x minus b, where x is the number of days and a and b are fitted coefficients. Now, this equation, I mean, it took a lot of, in, in order to, to develop this equation, it took a lot of work, uh, but now I can just update it um, easily every you know every single month to just show you guys where are we on this on this track and we go from periods while we've been showing this we've gone from periods of undervaluation to overvaluation and undervaluation and overvaluation and it's happened several times and right now we are at a period of overvaluation by approximately 84 percent now if that's somewhat concerning to you i'm not really sure why because we can we've been to much higher levels of overvaluation than we currently are. We can spend years being overvalued based on this trend line, but ultimately come back down to it. So you can see that in this cycle, we came to the undervaluation, and then in 2019, we went to overvalue. And then we came back down, and then we briefly went to being overvalued for a few days, and then we had the March crash that took us to the undervaluation region. Now, this is one of the reasons why of course, we'll always measure Bitcoin's ROI from market cycle bottom in December of 2018. But I've also discussed the important implications of the March dump because it actually took us down to this undervaluation region that we had not yet seen this market cycle. And I think it was this that really has allowed things to get kicked off in the manner in which they have. So what we want to do from here is, well, from this equation, from this equation y equals 10 raised to the a l of x minus b is there any type of underlying math that can be useful and we've showed this before and, and i think there is if you take the if you look at say like the percent difference between the price and the fair value then you get something that looks like this now i have to i shifted it a little bit because i mean it's the same as every other video but a hundred percent means it's at a fair value um, and, and the reason why I shifted it is so that I could show undervaluations, which would normally be negative on a logarithmic scale fairly easily. So anything below 100% on this is undervalued. If it's at 100%, that's actually the fair value, even though that might not be intuitive. And then the yellow line corresponds to what is the valuation versus the trend line. And despite the fact that we have about 11 years of price history, our peaks seem to be following this macro trend line down. And to get an idea of where these peaks are, 
they're they're decreasing because the distance from the peak to the regression line at each market cycle top is getting lower and lower. That's because we're seeing diminishing returns and overall lower volatility. And because of that, we can see that the extension of the total cryptocurrency market capitalization from the fair value logarithmic regression trend line is decreasing at market cycle tops. If you were to consider purchasing cryptocurrency, none of this is financial advice, of course, but one of the things we've discussed, even when we were in the undervaluation, undervaluation region, is for people who are very risk averse, you could just purchase crypto when we're in the undervaluation region, and you don't really care what goes on in between here. These are little bunny hills that you, you don't even get out of bed for. Um, and that could be one route that you take. Or you could take on a little more risk and purchase it up to say 200% on this, which would actually correspond to 100% overvalued since we've shifted everything to correspond to negative numbers being between zero and 100. Or you could even take it up higher if you wanted to. So ultimately it depends on, you know, on exactly how high you want to, how high you want to take it. So if we were to look at this chart though, We've made comparisons before between this cycle and two cycles ago. So this cycle here actually was had a much a much more well-defined market structure than this one. This one we just came into the undervaluation region. We stayed undervaluated undervaluated for a year or two, and then we went back up. This cycle has mimicked more this cycle over here. Now, I should say that there are already differences between this cycle and that cycle. One of the differences is you can see that between, say, the first red circle when we come to the undervaluation region to the final purple one, it this one was a lot shorter than this one over here. Um, also, so far, this cycle seems to have at least put in a local top at this point and it's come back down some. You can see it better here. The cycle two cycles ago basically just went straight up uh, for you know until it had this major blow off top and then back down. So this one has not gone up nearly as much as that one. However, we would also expect this to be the case, right? We would expect that to be the case. Now, we don't know what's going to happen from here, right? We simply do not know how long it will take us to get to this theoretical overvaluation region. You have to remember, and I don't, I don't really say this a lot in, the, in other videos, but if you know, as we're as we're going up these curves, we have to remember that everything is shifted by 100%. So if it's 200% here, it actually means it's 100% overvalued, since 100% is the fair value. So we don't know how long it'll take us to get back to this overvaluation region where we're on this macro trend line down. And of course, I've put out my own theories as to when that would happen. The, the point is to stay somewhat flexible on it while we have our theories uh, to stay somewhat flexible on it and, and see when it, it when exactly it does happen so that we can react accordingly. Now, potentially, maybe this cycle will we'll do something like this, where we come back down and then we have another blow off top and then we come back down a third time and then we have a final blow off top. Maybe it'll do something like this, where we go and put in a first peak and if we just exclude this one and say at this, you know, this pattern corresponds to this one over here, we put in a first peak, come back down and then put in a second peak. Perhaps we already put in the first peak and the second peak will be even, you know, much more explosive. Um, maybe one thing that could happen, what if we go back down to the undervaluation region before continuing to go to the cycle peak? It's certainly possible. Uh, you know, it's not necessarily the most likely thing, but one way in order to potentially get there is what if we just went sideways? Remember, the, the regression curve that we looked at is monotonically increasing. So if the total cryptocurrency asset class were to stay just completely flat for a year, then the, the valuation compared to the fair value would actually go down because we're comparing it to a, a, an, an ever increasing quote unquote fair value. So it's possible that we, you know, we come back down to the undervaluation region, and that could be from going sideways, or it could be from a correction that takes us back down some. So we don't want to discount any possibility when talking about where we are within the grand scheme of a market cycle. But one of the reasons why I don't think we're anywhere close to an entire market cycle top is simply because, well, we're nowhere near our macro level trend line down. Now, it's possible that 2021, our, our 42K peak, our, our, our 
short-term peak, our local peak, which is also our global peak, it could be that that is our peak for a while, just like the one in 2019 was a peak for a while at 14K. It's possible that something like that is, is ultimately what happens and that we don't trend up to the final macro trend line until later. It's also possible we trend up there sooner, but we just wanna do an update on this video once every month so that we're there every step of the way. Remember, subscribe to the channel so you can see these updates every single month and also turn on your notifications. So, for instance, if we were to be 800% overvalued, you know, by this point, we have to remind ourselves that this would actually be a 700% overvaluation. But again, it, it, it doesn't make a huge difference when we're talking about the fair value being around, you know, 1 trillion or 2 trillion or something. You know, it, you, you can't really get too bogged down in the details of whether it's a 700% or 800% at this point, because we still have a long way to go to get there. Now, if we put in, say, a cycle peak, let's say the end of 2022, maybe early 2023, then the fair value could be around 1 trillion or maybe 1.5 trillion. It obviously depends on exactly when we get there. If it happens in, say, the end of 2021, then the fair value would be less than a trillion. So if we were looking at, say, overvaluation from the fair value, we always want to figure out where is the current fair value so that we can figure out what does that mean for the overvaluation, like extension from the fair value. Now, in the same manner that you can see the peaks getting closer to the fair value each market cycle, I would also expect this peak to probably not even make it to the green line because that would be in accordance with what we've currently been, which what, what we've seen over the last 11 years or so. Um, so whether that means coming up sooner and peaking at less than $10 trillion or going up later and peaking at over $10 trillion is somewhat irrelevant because we, you know, we ultimately, it will ultimately depend on how long it takes us to get there. My contention is the longer it takes us to ultimately trend up, the higher we can theoretically fly. The earlier it happens, we're probably not going to have nearly as much momentum just because we won't have had as much time to garnish that, that, that momentum that we would need. So for instance, if we, if we were to go to say like an 800% overvaluation, then maybe that puts us at around a $10 trillion market capitalization, plus or minus a few trillion dollars among friends. And that brings me to my next point, and, and that is, again, we, we say this every single video, as we go to sleep at night, we can't help but wonder. We, we, you know, we just simply cannot help but wonder what's a few trillion among friends. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.